Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to design plant foundations in STAD Foundation Advanced. In this training video, we will be focusing on the STAD Foundation Advanced plant mode. The plant foundation mode is used to model, analyze, and design foundations for tanks and pressure vessels. This mode features the ability to automatically generate wind and seismic loads and consider different loading conditions such as the empty condition, the operating condition, and a testing condition for supported tanks and pressure vessels. Over the next series of videos, we will show you the complete workflow for designing vertical vessel foundations and drilled pier foundations in the STAD Foundation Advanced plant mode. We will now begin by launching STAD Foundation Advanced from your desktop icon. Once STAD Foundation Advanced opens, you will be shown the STAD Foundation Advanced Start page. And if I expand this area, we can see the modes that we can enter. We can enter our general mode, which is used to design a full foundation plan that might include matte foundations, isolated footings, combined foundations, or pile cap foundations. We could enter the plant mode, which is where we'll be spending our time today, or the toolkit mode. We'll go ahead and enter the plant foundation mode, which is used to design your vertical vessels or your drilled and driven piers. After in our plant foundation mode, I'm going to expand this project information group, and here I can see all of the foundation types I can create within this mode. Now before we create any new foundation types, we're going to go ahead and save our model. So we'll go up to a ribbon and in the Home tab, we'll click Save As. We'll just call this Plant. We'll save it to our desktop for today and then we'll click Save. In this video, we will show you the complete workflow for designing drilled pier foundations in the STAD Foundation Advanced Plant Mode. This will include the process of entering the drilled pier geometry, entering the toil, soil section parameters, all of your loading information and design parameter. Then after we enter all of that information, we'll be ready to design the drilled pier and review the pile design results via some graphs that will be available for this foundation type. To begin the process of designing a drilled pier foundation in STAT Foundation Advanced Plant Mode, we will go over to the main navigator pane once in the plant mode and click on the Create Drilled Pier item. Here we will be immediately sent to the data input wizard for drilled piers or driven piers in the STAD Foundation Advanced Plant Mode. What it will do is it will walk us through a series of wizard-based dialogues to help us in modeling our drilled pier and also specifying any relevant loading information. The first thing we're going to do is enter our job information. So we're going to select a pile type and we're going to go ahead and say it's a drilled shaft. Our unit system will go ahead and select the English unit system and for our design codes we'll select the US design code. Then we can enter our static loading or cyclic loading and we're going to go ahead and select static for this training today. Once you enter all of your job information, we'll go ahead and click on the next button to enter our peer section. Now STAD Foundation Advanced in the plant mode allows you to specify different peer sections as you work your way up your drilled or driven peer geometry. So for this particular one, we're going to have two different sections. We're going to have a larger diameter section on the bottom and then as we work our way up, we're going to um, hopefully be able to get away with a smaller diameter with fewer number of bars. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our pier height above the ground level and we'll enter that as 0 feet and we'll enter our water level at 27.5 feet for this training. Then the first thing we're going to do is enter our section 1 information. I'm going to start with the bottom most section for this particular drilled pier. So I'm going to select a section type. It's going to be a drilled shaft circular section without a casing 
And you can see we have several different types available for the drilled shaft since we selected that in the previous dialog. We're going to do an outside diameter of, we're going to start with 78 inches. We can do a casing thickness um, if we had a casing. And then we can enter our reinforcement layout. We're going to enter um, the number of bars as 16 bars, a bar size of number 8, and then a clear bar cover of 3 inches. Lastly, we're going to enter a section length of 18 feet. And we can see kind of the graphics are getting starting to update over there. So that's our first section. Then we're going to add another section above this section. So we're going to go ahead and select Add Section Above. And you can see here our graphic has changed. And then we can enter our information for our topmost section. We're going to do, again, a circular section without a casing, uh, an outside diameter of, this time, 60 inches. So we can start seeing that arrive over here. And then we're going to do 12 bars instead. For our section length, we'll enter that at 14 feet. And you can have as many pier sections as you need for your particular model. Then we're going to go ahead and click Next and enter our soil information. Now here we can, ha again, have multiple soil la layers as we work our way from the top or from the bottom of our drilled pier. For this exercise, we're going to start with the topmost soil layer and kind of work our way down. So our top soil layer, of course, we'd get this from our geotechnical engineer, is going to be a soft clay, a layer depth, and layer depth indicates basically the distance from the surface of the soil to the bottom of the current layer that you're defining. So from the top surface, or basically the overall thickness of this topmost soil layer is going to be 12 feet. We're going to enter a soil density of 110 pounds per cubic foot, an epsilon 50 of 0, and a cohesion of 2 kips per square foot, since we are defining a clay. Then we're going to enter our P multiplier as 1.0 and our Y multiplier as 1.0. After we're done with our first soil layer, we're going to add another layer below it. So I'm going to go ahead and say Add Layer Below. And then I can enter my information. I'm going to select a sand. from the API. I'm going to enter a layer depth. Now, since I'm not at the topmost layer anymore, I want to go from the surface of the soil to the bottom of this layer. That'll kind of define this depth. And I'm going to go ahead and say uh, 30 feet. And we can see our graphic starting to show up over here. I'm going to go ahead and select a soil density of 110 pounds per cubic foot, an angle of friction since we are doing a sand now, of 35 degrees, and then a P1 and a Y1 multiplier of 1.0. For this particular exercise, I'm going to add three soil layers. So I need one more, so I'm going to go ahead and say Add Layer Below. And then I could do my third layer. This time I'm going to select a medium dense sand, a layer depth of, we'll go ahead and say 50 feet, again the surface of the soil to the bottom of that layer, a soil density of 110 pounds per cubic foot, 35 degrees, and then a modulus of subgrade reaction and coefficient of earth pressure at rest. We can enter all of that information for this particular type of soil. Next, we're going to enter a P1 and a Y1 multiplier. After we are done entering our soil information, we can see that we have a soft clay, a sand, and then a medium dense sand we can go ahead and click on the Next button. Next, we're going to enter all the loading information for this particular model. The first thing we enter is our axial load. So the axial load will be applied to each individual load case. And we're going to enter a load of 255.107 kips. Now this load will be applied independent of load case and nonlinear section properties are generated considering the axial load. Now we're going to enter the information for our first load case, and you can have as many load cases as you're going to need for your particular model. So for our first load case, we're going to enter shear forces and some moment forces. 
And then we're going to enter a shear value of 36 kips and a moment value of 115.98 foot kips. So that'll define our first load case. If you need to add any additional loads, we can go ahead and click Add Loads. And then we could enter again our information. We're going to again do a shear force and a moment. We're going to enter a shear force of 26.747 kips and a moment of 168. So we have our first two load cases created. And again, you can add more if needed. And then later on when we review our results, we'll be able to review results for each analyzed load case. For this particular model, we'll leave our load cases set to 2, and then we'll just go ahead and click the Next button where we could enter our design parameters. This will include all of our reinforcement information and our concrete strength requirements and our critical depth for axial capacity. So we're going to go ahead and select Calculate for this area. We can enter some pile conditions, so we'll, we can enter a pile batter angle or a ground slope angle, which we'll enter at 5 degrees for this model. We can enter the number of increments along the pile that we wish to investigate through this analysis, so we'll go ahead and enter that at 12. We can enter a factor of safety for end bearing and also for skin friction, and the percent distribution for axial load only, and we'll enter that at 100%. Then we can choose to neglect your soil resistance zone for your axial capacity. So we can choose to select a portion of the top of the pile and the bottom of the pile to neglect for that skin friction value. So we're going to go ahead and enter 24 inches for the top and then 36 inches for the bottom. And then after we enter our design parameters, we're going to go ahead and click Finish. And then we'll click Save. And that would complete the process for our modeling in the plant mode for drilled or driven piers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.